Look at this artwork by American Abstract Expressionist artist Frank Stella, and this one by Ellsworth Kelly, Dutch artist Pete Mondrian, Swiss artist Sophie Teuber Arp, contemporary British artist Sarah Morris and Lisa Giles, Japanese artist Emi Ozawa, contemporary American artist Adam Sultan and Claire Rojas, Indian artist Nazreen Mohammadi, contemporary Nigerian artist Odili Donald Odita, and Ethiopian-born and American-based Tariku Shefebra. All these paintings have something in common. In the work shown, they all utilize clean, crisp lines or edge work for their shapes or blocks of color. This technique is referred to as hard edge painting. This is an approach to abstract painting that became widespread in the 1960s and is characterized by areas of flat color with sharp, clear, or hard edges. For this activity, we will consider circular curves and frames as compositional strategies to help develop our work and build our skill but in a more basic format. We will take inspiration from this artwork by Ellsworth Kelly. I will use tempera paint, which is water-based, but you could also follow along if using acrylic. This painting is not a finished work, but is instead a learning opportunity to test and trial ideas, while it's also implementing brush techniques. This painting should take around 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Feel free to pause or rewind as you follow along. Let's get started. Abstract Brush Techniques and Skills Hard Edge As this is a practice task, let's simply use half an A4 size paper. Draw a rectangle onto your paper. I'm using a ruler, but feel free to go freehand. Draw something like this on your paper. Don't worry too much if it is not exact. Draw lightly, otherwise we will most likely see the pencil lines through the paint. You can pause here to draw it on your paper. Decide if you prefer an analogous color scheme or a split complementary one. Analogous uses adjacent hues on the color wheel. This means you should choose three colors that are next to each other. Complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. Split complementary are therefore any two hues adjacent to its complement. I'm going to use a split complementary by using red, blue, and green. Take note of how much paint I have placed on my palette. We don't need a lot as our work will be slightly small. For brushes, I have a larger flat brush, a filbert, which has a curved top, and a smaller round brush. We'll also be using some masking tape. You may decide to have a water cup nearby to clean your brushes, as well as some paper towels. Let's start by taking our small round brush and paint the thin rectangle off to the left. Take some of the green, but take note on how I place the paint on the brush. I am pulling it away from the side and not dipping it in the middle or scooping it like a spoon. I suggest you only place paint halfway up the bristles. I then pat it on the palette to make it consistent. Let's first practice making clean lines by freehand. I rest my hand and bend the bristles to help keep my hand steady. The pressure along the edge of the brush along with the paint will help create the line. Go slow and sweep up towards the end. You will probably have to reload your brush often. I then go to the bottom corner and repeat the process, taking time to make the corner of the rectangle. For the other side, let's try using masking tape. You see I am holding and pulling the tape from both ends to make sure it is straight. Place it along your pencil line. When I push the tape down, I only push down on one side of the tape. I do this as tape can often rip the paper. Paint down along the tape. You may have to apply less paint and go over it more often. We do this so the paint does not bleed under the tape. Therefore, you should also paint away from the tape and not towards its edge. Paint the remaining edges and apply a second coat. To remove the tape, peel it slowly away on a 45 degree angle. If your paper rips, stop and try again from the other end. I really recommend you remove the tape as soon as you are done with it. If it sits longer, it becomes harder to remove. Students often let it sit too long. If you are using acrylic paint on canvas, removing tape is much easier. Let's stay with the green and paint a section on the other side. Since we have a limited color palette, we want to make sure and have a balance of color in our work. It's also faster to paint by colored sections. Try creating straight edges as demonstrated before. Since this is a smaller section, Look how I am using the tip of the brush instead to get into the smaller areas. Paint the edges first and then fill in. Let me show you another trick for painting edges. It's a little more riskier, but get a scrap piece of paper. Place it along your edge and paint away from the paper's edge. Remove the paper as soon as you finish. 
You can repeat this on the other side. Just make sure to use a clean edge of the paper, and not the previous section, as it is probably buckled. Rinse your brush and dab it on your paper towel. Let's use masking tape and do the edge of the first section we worked on with a different color. This time, I am placing the tape over the green paint. Let's paint the next section red. Remember what I mentioned before about how to apply paint to your brush and how much. Apply the red along the tape, remembering to paint away from the tape. You will often see me rotating my work. I do this as it is always easier to paint towards yourself. For the curved section, as before, I will rest my hand and carefully apply pressure along the edge with the brush. When this section is completed, remove the tape again on a 45 degree angle. I'm now going to switch to the flat brush. To get the corner edge, watch how I use my brush. I place the flat bristles along the line and sweep or drag it away to create the edge. To get the longer edge, I'm going to use the flat side of the brush again and slowly move the bristles along the line's edge. Note how the bristles are bent. Repeat this process for the remaining edges. You may need to switch between the two brushes to get into the little corners. I'll repeat the process on the bottom rectangle using the blue. And then paint the smaller section using blue as well, but using the smaller brush. I've washed my brush and will use the flat brush to apply green onto the right side. I'm going to apply the same techniques as before and use the edge of the brush to do the work for me. I apply some second coats as I work. I'll now use red to paint in the two smaller sections. To finish, I'll paint the last two sections blue. One of the annoying things with tempera paint is that they can get streaky with your brush marks. To solve this, you will have to apply multiple coats to make it consistent. You see this is very evident with the blue I am using. I'll use some tape for the outside edge. If you find your paper tearing when using tape, place it on your clothes or on your table surface so it is less sticky. Remember to not push all the tape down onto your paper. Push the edge you wish to tape only. Remember to also paint away from the tape. Remove it as soon as you are finished. Apply a second coat if required. Have a look at this image and compare it to this second one, which has a second coat of paint applied. You can clearly see the difference. Cartage painting can have interesting results as demonstrated by some of the artists mentioned at the beginning of this video. One additional thing to mention is that tape can also be used with curves. What artists will do is apply the tape on their work and use an X-Acto knife to cut the tape and create the edge they desire. Check out some of the other abstract painting tutorials available in the playlist linked in the card above. Good luck with your painting! Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment, question, or future video suggestion below. This has been a Video Production.